Rose Wan Goy explores taboo topics with compassion in her television reports. She shines a light on those who need it most, opening Kenyans' eyes to injustices around them and sparking changes in society. Traditional circumcisers are not ready to drop the practice. Her reporting for NTV has influenced the national debate on female genital mutilation. As part of healing, these girls will be spending some two months here and immediately thereafter married off to old men. Lawmakers say Wangoi's coverage of the traditional act of cutting drew attention to the custom's inherent brutality, pushing Kenyans to ban the practice in 2011. One of Wangoi's most powerful stories is her 2013 documentary, Beads of Bondage, about the custom of beading in tribal villages. A girl wears beaded necklaces to show that a grown man has claimed her as his sex partner. The black and white beads known as Ankeri signifies bondage. This mother told Wangoi a warrior, or Moran, beaded her 10-year-old daughter without her approval. A beaded girl is in a cruel trap. She must be available for the warrior, but is forbidden from marrying him or having his children. Tribal women demonstrated what they do when a beaded girl gets pregnant, a crude form of abortion. This woman told Wangoi she wouldn't wish the experience on anyone. After the story aired, funds were raised to build a shelter for young victims. Wangoi grew up in Nairobi, the youngest of five children in a devout Catholic family. As a schoolgirl, she volunteered at her church to feed the hungry and visit the sick. Her desire to help humanity led to her career in journalism. Her two-part series, Slavery in the Gulf, shed light on the abuse, and in some cases, murder, of Kenyan women who traveled to Saudi Arabia to work as domestic servants. Wangoi sat down with the family of one woman named Ansila, whose videotaped torture in Saudi Arabia went viral back in Mombasa. Video ilikuwa inaonekana amefungwa miguu iko juu hivi kichwa kwa hivi. Kuna watu wanafikiri ni watatu pale. Wanawake na wavulana wanampiga mjeleti. Huku anazungumza kikwao tunakucheka. Huku anamtandika. Hii akilia. Following the report, Kenya's labor minister launched an investigation into the employment agencies that send the women to the Gulf states. Intersex people are not rare, but they are widely misunderstood. Wangoi also addresses issues others don't dare to explore. Her 2018 story, Born in Between, highlighted the challenges Kenyans face if they're born with both male and female reproductive traits. After her report aired, a government task force asked Wangoi for her insights and relied on her story to develop policies to protect the rights of intersex people. Wangoi takes a particular interest in the plight of children. In her eight-part series, A Second Chance, she profiled disadvantaged children, including Baby Faith, who was found alive after being dumped in a bag as a newborn. One Goy documented Faith's progress year after year as she flourished at the Good Samaritan Children's Home in Nairobi. My name is Faith Wangeshi. My favorite subject is English and math. When I grow up, I would like to be a teacher. One Goy had a personal interest in the story. She has paid school fees for 25 underprivileged children. I felt I had an obligation to do more. Rose Wangoi remains committed to telling stories that cast light on the dark corners of Kenyan society. 
She plans to continue her compassionate reporting in the hopes of improving as many lives as possible. I want to shed light on the untold stories because we must change society one story at a time.